welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi, everyone, and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 106. Today, we are talking about soft skills to help you with weight loss. I hope you're well. This is going to be a great podcast episode that is going to really help you identify ways that you can help yourself make weight loss easier. And as is so often the case, it has nothing to do with food. But before we dive in and get started talking about these soft skills, I want to invite you to apply for the My One Life Mastermind. You don't have long as we start later this month. So if you've been thinking about it, get your application in and let's chat and figure out what is the best weight loss approach for you. For those of you who don't know, the My One Life Mastermind is a six month, highly supportive, very small group weight loss coaching program. We start with the in-person success day, which is where you get to take a day out of your life and spend that time focusing on getting yourself set up for the next six months. We spend the morning helping you figure out what eating right for you is going to look like. And then the afternoon helping you identify your personal weight loss obstacles and helping you put in place strategies to overcome them. You'll leave Mastermind Success Day having mapped out your weight loss journey so that you know how you're going to be applying everything that you learn in the Mastermind modules to your life. Then after the success day, the mastermind will look like you having weekly short focus lessons. These are pre-recorded so you can log into the portal and watch them at any time or you can listen to them via private podcast. They're short, succinct lessons that you can or teach you a concept and then you will have worksheets and action steps to help you apply what you learn. In addition to this, there will be your weekly live coaching call via Zoom where you will be coached every single week live on the call. So everyone gets coached in the mastermind. There's no hiding with this program. Once you're in, you're in. And whilst personal coaching is invaluable, so also is the opportunity to witness others being coached. Sometimes we are so immersed in our own life, it can be difficult to see why we're finding things challenging. But oftentimes when we see other people being coached, we're able to identify some of our own blind spots and find solutions for them that we may not have seen for ourselves. And then we can use those solutions for ourselves too. You also get a massive amount of support between calls. You are encouraged to post in a small Facebook group every single time you find yourself struggling, whether that looks like struggling with how you're thinking, how you're feeling, or actually when you find yourself eating emotionally or overeating. You're encouraged to post every single time so that we always look at what has gone on for you so that you can learn to understand what it is about for you. And then you get help and support to see what you can take from that learning so that you can use it to help you going forward. The journey of creating a relationship with food that works for you, that enables you to be the weight that you want to be, is very much an iterative process of learning and continually applying what you learn to sort of feed that into your brain so that you naturally start to form new habits that are going to make it so much easier for you to lose your weight. So if you want to know more about the mastermind, then go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash mastermind to get all the details, both of what happens in the mastermind itself and also um, details of how to apply. Okay, so now on to soft skills for weight loss. Well, first of all, what is a soft skill? So I first came across the term, I think probably in my mid-twenties when I was working for the Thompson Corporation. And as a part of the training that was offered, there was a section that was called soft skills training. And that was where we could take courses on things like communication, problem solving, adaptability, self-motivation, growth mindset, all of those skills that we often think of as transferable skills. Now, according to Google, the definition of a soft skill is a non-technical skill that describes how you work and how you interact with others. I would describe the soft skills that I'm going to talk to you about today as the soft skills that will help you lose your weight and manage your weight for life, very much as ways of being. 
in your approach to weight loss and actually just your approach to life in general. So rather than thinking about these soft skills that is often a sort of a typical definition, you know, we might think of as people skills. These are very much skills that are really underpinning the way in which you are showing up. It's more about who you are being in everything that you do rather than the actual things you're doing. And one of the great things about soft skills that you learn and or develop as a part of your weight loss journey is that they can, of course, be applied to any area of your life. And as you develop these skills, you will be evolving your capability for creating what you want in other areas of your life too. So many of you come to me frustrated because you see yourself as you know, really highly capable, which of course you are, in so many areas of your life. And some of you, you feel that you're so capable in every single area of your life, except the area of weight loss and weight management. And then you learn and evolve these soft skills and you see that other areas of your life can be even better than you imagined too. So I just want to really highlight that point because so many times women who join a mastermind program or the academy share that, you know, what they never expected was that the what they were learning as a part of these programs were going to impact so many areas of their life, not just losing weight and being able to manage their weight. So one more thing before we dive into weight loss and weight management soft skills, I just want to consider what might be, I don't know whether we think of them as technical skills or hard skills. So, you know, the Google definition of a hard skill is a technical skill required for a job. They are learned abilities acquired and enhanced through education and experience. I think it's a slightly flaky definition because soft skills can also be learned and acquired and enhanced through education and experience. So it doesn't really differentiate one from the other. But what I would consider some of the hard skills or maybe technical skills of weight loss as we teach them in the My One Life Mastermind and the Lose Weight Live Life Academy are things like creating your personal framework, understanding how to make planning work for you and applying that to your life, tracking and analysing the data that you get from all of your weight loss things that you're doing and how to use that data and analyse it and use it to help you going forward the skill of doing a thought download, the skill of doing a mindset model, the skill of processing or allowing an emotion. All of these skills have very specific steps. It's very clear when you're doing them and when you're not doing them. And I think that's probably one of the differences. Whereas with the soft skills, it's very much about a way of being. There's no specific sort of step one, step two, step three, as there are with the more technical or hard skills of weight loss. So, the soft skills that I want to talk to you about today are acceptance, forgiveness, resilience, self-love and appreciation, open-mindedness, problem solving, non-judgment, curiosity, logical thinking and a growth mindset. Although as I look at those now, I don't think I'm going to talk about them in that order. OK, but we'll start with talking about acceptance. Acceptance means facing reality as it is. That reality could be the reality that your weight is what it is, the reality that you may have regained weight that you lost, or the reality that your eating has contributed to a health condition. I often call it meeting yourself where you're at. And acceptance is something that I really encourage you to focus on at the beginning of your weight loss journey. It often looks like letting go of wishing things were different. It often looks like letting go of regret and shame and judgment and many other emotions as well. Acceptance doesn't come easily for most of us. I think that could be because sometimes it can feel counterintuitive. It can feel scary to accept yourself at the weight that you are because you want to change. And so you may feel a misguided fear that accepting yourself means that you won't change, but it doesn't work that way. So how do you know if you've mastered the soft skill of acceptance or not? And I want you to know that it is a skill. It is something that you can learn because it's all too easy to think that it's something we either have or we don't have. And that's just not the case. When you're not practicing acceptance, you will be practicing resistance. And resistance looks like you may be wishing things were different in that you were, weren't the weight or clothes size that you are. Wishing weight loss was easier. Wishing weight loss was quicker. Wishing you could eat all the things and still lose weight. And this is all really normal. Many of you will think, well, yes, of course, I'm going to wish those things. OK, so it's really understandable. But at the same time, there is a benefit to what I call meeting yourself where you're at. There's a benefit to accepting that weight loss is not a quick process, 
there's a benefit to accepting that sometimes weight loss feels easy and sometimes weight loss feels hard or difficult. When you notice ways of thinking, such as wishing it was quicker or easier or that you were a different weight to the weight that you are, when you notice with these ways of thinking, you're distracting yourself from thinking, feeling and doing things that will actually create what you want. You prevent yourself from creating the weight loss results that you want, the relationship with food that you want. We all have a limited capacity, a limited capacity for thinking and doing. We have a limited amount of energy and you want to get really good at being focused about where you put your energy and attention and acceptance will help you do that. When you step into a place of acceptance, you're not wasting your energy, your focus and your attention, arguing with reality, wishing things were different, and you are instead using that energy, focus and attention to help you experiment, problem solve, try new things, discover what works for you, all of those great things that are going to help you with your weight loss. So wishing weight loss was quicker is not going to make weight loss quicker. In fact, wishing it was quicker is going to make it slower because you've got less energy to focus on doing the things that will help you lose the weight. All right, so that's acceptance. Next, I want to talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness, I think, comes after acceptance. And it may seem crazy to you, but so many of you are so mad with yourself for allowing yourself to gain weight or become unhealthy. You may be mad with yourself for not having figured out weight loss and weight management yet. I can really relate to that one. I was so mad with myself that I hadn't been able to figure this out. And I know a lot of you are too when I speak to you. When there is a requirement for forgiveness, more often than not, it is ourselves we need to forgive. So most of the time where I'm seeing that there is an opportunity for forgiveness, so often you want to look inwards and forgive yourself. And yet some of you also may have some other areas of your life that you are blaming for you being a different weight to the weight that you want to be. It might look like you feeling resentful of the relationship with food that you were taught by your parents when you were younger or how you were treated by friends at school because you can see how that has led to your some of your emotional eating. Maybe you were bullied, for example. Or you might be mad at the food manufacturing industry or the diet industry. You know, there's very justified reasons where we we might be mad at some of the things that we wish were different to how we are seeing them. And forgiveness is required there too. So how do you forgive yourself as a part of your weight loss journey? One way for you to, give, for you to forgive yourself is to realise that you did the best that you could at that present moment in time. None of us set out to eat in a misguided way so that we would gain weight and be unhealthy and feel miserable, okay? Instead, we unknowingly learned to use food to help us to feel better or manage our lives. And we unknowingly learned this for whether it's from our families, culture, society, or as I said, the food manufacturing, dieting and advertising industries. It doesn't really matter. But if we are feeling frustration, resistance, wishing things were different, then there may be an opportunity for you to feel better with what you want to do next to help yourself if you think about forgiveness. I really encourage you to forgive yourself for not knowing, for example, that as a child, maybe, you know, accepting some treats, which of course you're going to do when you did well or being comforted with biscuits when you fell over might start a pattern of events, a pattern of thinking and feeling and managing different situations in life that look like contributed to you having a relationship with food where you ended up overeating. No one could have foreseen that. It's really important that you make peace and you have acceptance and that you find forgiveness. These actions by our parents were normal and they still are absolutely normal in the world in which we live today. They are, nothing went wrong here. But if you feel some resentment towards that, then it might be that you want to look at forgiveness. Okay, so on to resilience. So resilience is the ability to recover quickly from difficulties. There will be many challenges on your weight loss journey. There will be many challenges that you overcome easily and challenges that lead you to eating differently to how you intended frequently, okay? The soft skill of resilience on your weight loss journey can be measured in the time it takes for you to resolve and overeat. So if we want to get really sort of, you know, want to try and put some wrappers around what resilience might look like, this is what I encourage you to focus on. 
When you have an overeat, when you have an emotional eat, the time it takes for you to resolve that, to make peace with it, to learn from it and to use it, use what you learned to help you moving forward. Many of you who have started working with me talk about getting derailed. Something can happen that triggers you to overeat and that overeat leads to, it could be a day of overeating and that day of overeating could then lead to a weekend of overeating, which could then lead you to starting again on Monday. And then you find that actually it feels more difficult to start again on Monday than you anticipated. And so you get derailed that day. And then before you know it, you found yourself overeating for two weeks just because you had a cake when you met your friend for coffee two weeks ago, even though you told yourself you wouldn't. And then you did. OK, and this is really normal and it is very much habitual behaviour that comes from old patterns of yo-yo dieting and restriction and deprivation that we associate with dieting. Where resilience comes in is with the ability to recover quickly, as I was saying. You strengthen your resilience when you learn how to reduce the time it takes for you to make peace with and learn from and move on from overeating. Your goal is to make each overeat an isolated incident that does not in any way impact future eating. As you can imagine, when you do that, weight loss is a whole lot easier and you will be changing your relationship with food along the way as well. Resilience will help you manage your mind after you overeat, allow your emotions after you overeat and take steps to do the work of understanding your overeating and problem solving so that you are ready to try something different the next time you find yourself in the situation that led you to that overeat in the first place. Next is self-love and appreciation. Another critical soft skill. You cannot hate yourself slim and it's more difficult to lose weight even if you mildly dislike yourself than it is if you have unconditional self-love and appreciation for yourself. Unconditional self-love and appreciation doesn't come easily to many of us. In fact, it can be an almost daily practice of having to work on it and clean up our own negative thoughts about ourselves. But the work of doing so is invaluable. How does it help with weight loss? Well, when you're wanting to lose weight so that you can be physically and emotionally healthy, not wanting to lose weight to conform to a socially accepted standard of how we should look, because that's not going to work, and if you're not sure why you're wanting to lose weight, do investigate that for yourself. But when you want to lose weight to be physically and emotionally healthy, losing weight is an act of self-care. And it's far easier to do caring things for someone you love and appreciate than it is for someone you feel indifferent towards or don't like or hate intensely. This is why a daily check-in to work on your relationship with yourself can be life-changing when it comes to enhancing your soft skills of self-love and self-appreciation. And you can do this very simply by writing down every day 10 reasons why you love and appreciate yourself. But I don't want you to just write those reasons down on paper. I want you to write them down on paper and then I want you to mull over them. I want you to say them to yourself. I want you to experience how it feels in your body when you truly think and step into those thoughts. Okay. All right. For more about self-love and self-appreciation, check out podcast episode number 28, which is called Loving Yourself First. The next three soft skills go together. They are about having an inquiring mind, which I'm thinking of as the soft skills of having a desire to problem solve, demonstrating curiosity and being non-judgmental. Let's start with being non-judgmental as we are going to want to clear away those weeds of judgment before we can sow the seeds of curiosity and problem solving. So it's human nature to judge ourselves and other people. So first of all, don't judge yourself for being judgmental. When you're stuck in judgment, you're using up your energy reserves in a way of being that's not going to help you with your weight loss and hence it will be hindering you. Let go of your judgments and instead step into curiosity. Why did I choose to eat that when I want to lose weight and I know it's not going to help me? You want to ask that question of yourself kindly from a place of curiosity and not from a place of judgment. That might look like you thinking, aren't my habits fascinating? 
I wonder why I find it so difficult to drink water when I know it will help me with my weight loss. One of our unique abilities of being human is our ability to observe and examine ourselves and seek to understand, understand ourselves. This soft skill of seeking to understand ourselves, underpinned by curiosity, is also vital when it comes to creating a relationship with food that will work for you for life. You cannot create new habits and ways of being if you are unaware of or not understanding your existing ones. And often it's our hindering habits that provide the key, the stepping stone or the platform, if you like, to making a small change that will lead to the formation of new life-changing positive habits. Okay, so once you've let go of judgment, you, once you've been curious and started to become more aware and understand yourself, now you're going to want to use the soft skills of problem solving. I see an obvious lack of problem solving skills when it comes to figuring out how you want to eat for life to be the weight that you want to be amongst the women that I work with. And again, it's a reflection of everything we've been taught about weight loss our entire lives. It's not your fault. Maybe it's because we're so used to being told how to eat to lose weight. We're very poor at knowing that we are the best person to figure out and problem solve in our relationship with food. The steps of problem solving, if you look them up on Google, are not well defined. There are a ton of theories and possible ways to approach problem solving. In the Lose Weight, Live Life Academy and the My One Life Mastermind programs, we teach specific approaches to problem solving and there are worksheets that you can use to guide you through the process step by step. But for now, I just want you to start with getting very clear on what the problem is. I want you to understand what aspects of what you think is a problem in on your journey to losing weight, what's blocking you, what's stopping you. I want you to understand what aspects of that are within your control and what aren't. And then I also want you to consider why is what you think is a problem actually a problem. Getting really clear on this first before you start to brainstorm all possible solutions will help you. And I think actually as I think about it now that might be useful to give you some further insight into on a future episode. So although problem solving is something that we do in detail in the My One Life Mastermind, I will introduce you to some of those concepts on future podcast episodes. All right, next I want to talk to you about the value of logical thinking. I see a distinct lack of logical thinking when it comes to our relationship with the scales. It's crazy that these small mechanical objects can have us doubting ourselves, self-sabotaging ourselves, putting us into a negative emotional state for an entire day or in some cases even a week and that can be really miserable and of course it isn't the scales they do not have the power to do that it is our thoughts that we have about the numbers on the scales that we see and how we interpret them it's about what we make those numbers mean about our weight loss efforts that leads us to eat in ways that don't support our weight loss efforts in response to the number on the scales the frequent illogical thinking that I see based on the number on the scales makes it clear why logical thinking is a soft skill required for weight loss. I had a coaching session with a client this week who had been eating according to the food framework she put together. For those of you not working with me, a food framework is a framework for how you want to eat in order to lose weight and be the weight that you want to be for life. And this client knew that eating the way that she was would absolutely enable her to lose weight. But when she stood on the scales, she saw a tiny increase. And her response was the opposite of logical thinking, which she was very much aware of, even though she knew that there was no way in the world in which she had been eating in such a way that she could have created a weight gain. She, instead of trusting herself, told herself that if indeed she was what she was doing wasn't working. And then that led to, you know, sort of four days of overeating, because of course, when we tell ourselves that what we're doing isn't working, then we sort of add on to that. So we may as well eat all the things. Telling ourselves that what we want, when of course it isn't because we're eating all the things, not only leads to weight gain, but also leads to feeling bloated and having less energy. Maybe for some of us, for me anyway. And this is not unusual behavior. This is really, really typical of so many of you. And it's really understandable and it's really unhelpful. There are lots of reasons why we do this. And I won't go into them because what I want to focus on here is how the opposite of this is really logical. 
a logical response would have been, knowing that you're an intelligent woman, knowing that you have not eaten in such a way that would lead to you gaining weight. Therefore, it would be logical to think that the weight gain or lack of weight loss is going to be related to a small increase in water, or maybe it's something to do with our digestion. It could be a hormonal imbalance, which could sort of interact with the other two as well. But essentially, what we want to remember is that if we continue eating the way in which we have been, that we know will lead to us losing weight, that we will see the number on the scales go down. Whether that is the next time we stand on them, or the time after, or the time after that, we will see those numbers go down 100%. Promise it. I see emotional and illogical responses to the number on the scales far too frequently. Enhancing your logical thinking skills on your weight loss journey will make a difference, not just to how you approach the number you see on the scales, but in other areas too. And the last two soft skills that I want to touch on are the skill of being open-minded and the skill of having a growth mindset. So the skill of being open-minded is to first recognise when you're being closed-minded and then to be willing to open your mind to a new possibility. Often we don't know we're being closed-minded because we think that what we think or believe is the truth. We think it's cold hard fact even when it isn't. Examples of being closed-minded range from believing that weight loss is more difficult for you than it is for someone else because of, I don't know, x, y, z reason such as your family situation, a work situation or maybe a health condition. To believing that you shouldn't go to bed in a hurry, you shouldn't go to bed hungry. When you believe you're just a person who cannot go to bed hungry, and I hear this quite a lot as well, or that it's wrong to go to bed hungry, you've closed your mind to the idea, the premise, the scientific research even, that shares why it is healthier for a person to not eat within a couple of hours of going to bed. That our bodies are designed to support themselves during our hours of sleep and not use food in our stomachs during that period. So when you are attached to believing something and you don't see that there is an alternative way to think about it that will help you, that is when you are being closed minded and there's an opportunity for you to learn the skill of becoming open minded and get comfortable with that or comfortable feeling uncomfortable with that because that can really help you on your weight loss journey. And then the soft skill of having a growth mindset again makes a phenomenal difference. In fact, all of these skills are life skills that will help you in so much, as I said before, in all areas of your life, not just in your relationship with food and weight. So a growth mindset as defined by Carol Dweck, author of the book Mindset, is this. Believing that with effort, perseverance and drive, you can develop your natural qualities to fulfil your potential. Which, when it comes to our weight loss journey, means that with effort, perseverance and drive, you and anyone else for that matter, no matter what obstacles you face, can develop the knowledge, skills and capabilities to create the relationship with food that works for you and then lose and manage your weight for life. This is the process that underpins everything that we do in the My One Life Mastermind, as well as in the Academy, which is that we are learning, refining and improving our relationship with food, ourselves and our lives every single day. If you would like to hear more about the soft skills of being open-minded and having a growth mindset, I talk about them in more detail on podcast episode number 87 called The Open-Minded Benefit. And I highly recommend that you check out that episode if you haven't already. Okay, now that was the last of the soft skills. Something that occurred to me as I pondered these, these soft skills and the development of them is how vastly different the approach is to the dieting approach to weight loss that I tried repeatedly for decades. It is amazing that given the advances in other areas of science and understanding human behaviour, our thinking could be so outdated with regards to our relationship with food. It's astounding to me now that we believed that the key to losing weight was in simply being told what to eat. There's so little research that has been dedicated to understanding human behaviour and our relationship with food in this space And I just, as I said, I find that astounding given the cost to the economy and to our health of obesity globally. Anyhow, that is probably a podcast topic for another day. For the moment, I want you to be gentle with yourself as you consider the soft skills you are using already in supporting your weight loss journey. 
then maybe pick just one to focus on for the next few weeks and see how you can use that skill to make things easier for you to create the relationship with food that you want to help you be the weight that you want to be. And of course, if you would like help learning and developing your competencies in both the soft skills and the hard skills of weight loss, then you are invited to join us in the My One Life Mastermind. You can go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash mastermind for all the details of what's included and details for how to apply. And finally, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has left a review of this podcast. I hadn't looked at them for a while, but I did do so this morning. And I was so pleased that there are so many of you who are sharing that you're being helped and supported by listening. Thank you so much for leaving us a review and sharing how these podcasts are helping you. And if you haven't left a review yet, then please, please do take just a moment to do that now. Highly rating and leaving a review of this podcast means that Apple and the other podcast platforms will show them to more people, which means that others who maybe feel like they are struggling with their weight will discover that they're not alone and that what they're experiencing is very normal and hopefully through this podcast can get some information and support to help them. Okay, and as always, thank you so much for listening and I look forward to sharing more with you next week. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honoured to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The programme offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.